Hi everybody, it's Donovan Cole, and in this video, I'm going to go through my raw processing in Lightroom and my color grade in Photoshop on this image right here. And welcome to my channel, as well as my very first YouTube tutorial ever. Uh, I decided to uh, do a color grade tutorial for my very first video because I um, achieved a look on this picture and I was really proud of it. So I just wanted to share with you guys uh, what I did and how I got there, uh, first in Lightroom and then in Photoshop to finish it off. So this is the image that we are going to be working on today. This is a picture that I took of my good friend Cassandra. She's a phenomenal model, so I'm definitely going to link her social media in the description below so that you all can go and check her out. And I have this image in Lightroom right now. This image is straight out of camera. I haven't done anything to the image except for crop it. But whenever we go into Photoshop, you will see the retouched photo. And uh, we're going to go through the color grade process in Photoshop whenever we get to there. I always pull my pictures up in Lightroom. This is where I do um, all of my raw processing. Um, to kind of get myself a base image before I pull it into Photoshop to be retouched. So I do have presets and stuff that I uh, throw on certain images. Not all of them work for the same image. I sometimes have to go in and tweak them a little bit. But they're always good to have and you can play around with different things. And uh, you can even save your own presets and stuff like that. So we are going to go ahead and get started. For this image, I really want to give it that fall vibe. So... I'm really digging this like fall fashion look that we have going on. And I did shoot this at golden hour. So I definitely want this to be a very warm image. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm probably going to warm this image up. And I wrote everything down that I did so I didn't forget. Oh, I did it perfectly. Usually it's stubborn. So I knocked my temperature up to 5900. And that really warmed up my image. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. And for my tint, I'm going to knock this down to zero to kind of get rid of that magenta cast thing that we had going on. For now, I'm just going to leave this alone. Vibrance, I'm probably going to take this down to negative 10. Just to kind of calm everything down a little bit. And next, I'm going to come all the way down here. I'm going to make sure that I check my profile corrections just in case that there is any distortion in the lens, and there was, so that took care of it. And I always check Remove Chromatic Aberration. And this will make sure that there aren't any, like, purple or green, red halos anywhere in the image. Next, we'll come down here to our camera calibration. This is where you can really fine-tune and mess with um, your uh, pixels in the image. It's kind of similar to your hue and saturation sliders except for you're not targeting individual colors like you are up there down here you're messing with the entire image so you're messing with all of the red pixels all of the green pixels all of the blue pixels in the image so these sliders down here will affect your entire image except for that one specific color that you are trying to target so right here you have your camera profile it automatically goes to Adobe Standard. I think if you shoot with Canon, I'm not for sure about other camera bodies. But I usually go after Camera Neutral or Camera Standard. For this image, I'm going to go with Camera Standard. And you see how that really kind of makes everything pop out. Really makes the colors pop. Um, does add a little bit of contrast to it, which I love. I love contrast. So this one's always my go-to. And Camera Neutral kind of does tone everything down just a little bit. And I use that sometimes, but for this one, I'm going to stick with camera standard. And down here in my blue primary, I'm going to hit up my blue hue slider. I'm going to knock this down to negative 100. And you see that made the image really red, but don't worry, we are going to take care of that. After that, I'm going to go into my green primary and go to my hue slider there as well. And I'm going to knock that down to negative 100 as well. And to get rid of this redness that we have going on over the entire image, come into your red primary and knock that down to negative 100 as well. And we get this really, really cool 
vintage type brown effect, which I absolutely love. So this, you know, we're already on our way to having a fall fashion image. Up here, I'm not really going to mess with any of this. I'm actually going to come up to my HSL. I'm going to change the hue of my red just a little bit. Put some more red into there. And now I am targeting my individual red pixels. More the color red, if you know what I mean. So it's going to... It's going to mess with um, her face just a little bit, her skin color, and definitely her lips right here. So I'm going to bring a little bit of color back into those. Saturation. I might desaturate the red just a little bit. I usually always do it in Photoshop, but I'm just going to go ahead and knock it out here. Negative 14 sounds pretty okay. And luminance. This is where you can darken or lighten your colors. So I'm going to deepen my red just a little bit just to make her lips and some areas of her face stand out. I might, you know, I went about negative 35, 36 on that. And I don't know if you all see it, but I do have this blue thing back here that I don't really like. So I am going to minimize that by darkening it just a little bit. Or a lot of it. And I will come in here and I will desaturate it. And that is perfect right there. And that pretty much did it for my raw processing in Lightroom. So I'm pretty happy with the image that I have. Uh, you can save this as a preset by going up here to develop and hitting new preset. So you can apply... Um, the, the same things to every single image that you have of this set. It won't work for every single image. It might. Um, you can try it out and maybe going in and tweaking just a few things. Uh, you might get a pretty cool look. So I am actually ready to pull this up into Photoshop to be retouched. But it's already been retouched. So we're just going to go into Photoshop and do the color grading that I did on it. Okay, so we are in Photoshop. This is my retouched image. I have everything after the retouch turned off, so I can uh, go through the uh, color grading process with you guys. So we're gonna close this and we are going to start from scratch. So on this particular image, I really want to enhance this glow that is being casted in the image from the sun. So I think it's really cool. Direct sunlight is like my favorite type of light to shoot in, especially golden hour, it's really cool. So I definitely want to give it that effect and we can actually really easily do this in just about two layers so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a hue and saturation adjustment layer you can go to those by hitting this little icon down here there's also one up here if you don't see it you can go to I think window and click on adjustments and it'll pop right up so on my hue saturation master panel I'm going to knock this hue up to plus two. And I'm going to go into my reds. And I am going to go about plus four or five on this. And I think that will do it. After this, I'm going to create a curve adjustment layer. And I'm going to grab my white point or the brightest parts of my image up here and I'm just going to drag this a little bit to the left about 250 for your input should be perfect and that was it I'm going to go ahead and make these into a group by uh, hitting shift and click and command or control G if you're on a PC and I'll just name that glow and I'll do a quick before and after for you all I don't know if you all can see that, but it you know, kind of toned down the reds a little bit, took some redness out of her skin, and that curve adjustment layer you know, really enhanced that brightness that the sun is giving her in this image. So just a few small things can you know, take your image you know, a pretty long way. So after this, I did contour my model just a little bit. For a fashion image, I usually contour the entire model, kind of gives some depth to her clothing 
and uh, also contours her face as well. So, and there's a couple of ways to, to do that. You can do that manually with dodge and burn, or you can add a black and white layer. And I'm going to make this pretty contrasty by knocking down my reds quite a bit, as well as my yellows. Not going to mess with any other sliders. I'm going to close this. I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to soft light. And I'm going to lower my opacity to 20%. You see that really added some contrast to it, but we are actually going to invert this black and white mask by hitting Command or Control I. And I am going to grab my stylus. If you have a Wacom tablet, good for you. If you don't, I highly recommend to get one. And I'm going to grab a brush tool. I'm going to make sure that my flow is about 20%, so I'm going to type this in. So the total effect is not going to be immediate for a, a brush tool with a low flow. And if you do have a certain tool that you use a lot, I do use a, uh, well, I just call it my masking brush uh, with, I have a 10% flow, 20% flow, and even 100% flow, depends on what I'm doing. And you can even save it as a tool preset so you don't have to go and make it every single time. So I am going to paint on this mask. I'm going to make sure that my brush color is set to white so that we can reveal what is underneath of here. I'm going to make my brush bigger. You can do that with your bracket keys or hold control and option at the same time and drag to the left or to the right to make it bigger or smaller. So I'm just going to slowly just paint over her in her outfit. It might not look like I'm doing a whole, whole lot right now, but that is, that's the goal. Don't really want any sudden changes, especially when it comes to retouching. Or the look that you're going for, you know. A little bit more here. Cool. And you can even see where we painted on the mask right here. So I'll do a quick before and after. And that really did add some depth and interest to her. At least it does to me, you know. Cool. So that is a way to do that. I'm going to go ahead and make a group by itself just to stay organized because I'm a little OCD sometimes. And I'll just name that contour. And now we are really going to get into the actual color grade here. So the first thing that I do when I begin my color grading is I desaturate the image just a little bit. So you can also, you can do that a couple ways. You can do it with hue and saturation and desaturate your uh, master channel in there. Or what I like to do, I like to create a black and white layer and just close that and knock my opacity down to about 20 or 30% depending on the image or the look that I'm going for. So there is that desaturated. I always recommend doing that before you begin color grading because it does tend to hold color a lot better and it, it looks pretty good. So that's the first step. The next step, I'm going to kind of create this really cool tint effect on my image. And I've spent forever playing around with this I feel like this is the most unused adjustment layer in Photoshop. It is the channel mixer, which is really confusing. I don't really mess with it that much unless I'm doing this, what I'm about to show you. So I have that pulled up and I'm going to check monochrome. And I'm gonna go up here to the black and white with blue filter preset that Photoshop has. So for your channel mixer, you need to make this number down here equal positive 100. So I am going to mess with all of these. First, I'm going to take my blue up to 200. You can type it in or move your slider. I like to type it. And then so I need to make this equal 100. So I'm going to come into my greens. And I did a negative 70. And then a negative 30 on my reds. 
to get this to 100. And I will close that. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to multiply. And you see it looks kind of cool, but it's dark. So I'm going to lower the opacity. And I think I had it set at about 15%. And it just gave it this really neat tint effect. Did add some contrast, which I love. And we're probably going to add more later. Because it's my favorite thing in the world. So that's pretty cool. You can play around with it. I, I do do it on a lot of my images. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So but that's like the, really the only time that I ever use a channel mixer. So after uh, our channel mixer, I'm going to pull up a selective color adjustment layer. And this is where you can, well, I think it might be self-explanatory. You can uh, selectively mess with your colors. <laughs> so I'm going to come into my reds. So for this, I'm mostly going to be messing with her skin tone. And I want to stick with warm colors. So I'm not going to do a whole, whole lot here. And this won't make a huge, huge difference, but it'll, it'll be more subtle. So down here in your black slider, you have the option to take away some blacks or add in some blacks and make your reds darker or lighter. For this image, I made them just a little bit darker. I went about plus 10. And I added some yellows to those areas to give it some more warmth because the sun is directly in her face. So I really want it to look like the sun is directly in her face. After this, I came into my yellow and I made, this is pretty much going to affect all of her skin and a little bit of the background, but that's okay. So I took this down to minus 12 and I added in some more yellow. Went plus 10 on that. And we'll do a before and after. Very subtle difference. Very cool. Kind of gave it that more, gave her a little bit more glow. After this uh, selective color adjustment, I made this gradient map. So we're going to go down here, pull up our gradient map. And I used a series of four colors. So if you click on your bar right here, your gradient editor will come up. And I'm just going to find one that has four colors and we're going to make it together. Okay, there's one. I'm going to move this to the edge. I'll leave those right there. So with gradient maps, this looks kind of funky right now, but your point over here to the far left is going to affect your shadows. Your points here are going to affect more of your midtone range. And this point down here to the far right is going to affect the brightest areas of your image. So we can change these colors by clicking on this box right here, selecting that color, and then clicking on this box right here to pull up this color picker. And I have the numbers for the colors that I used. The first color that I have in the shadows is going to be 703030 kind of maroon-ish color. I'm going to hit OK. Click on my second color. Click on this box. The second color that I had is 2, F, 3, 4, 3, B. This slate gray bluish color. It's pretty cool. The third, E, 3, C, D, A, 4. More of a skin tone color. And then finally, our last color is C, 7, 7, 9, 6, 6. Another type of skin tone color, just a little bit warmer, more red. And I don't know why that didn't work. <laughs> We're going to do this again. 7, 7, 9, 6, 6. Okay, there we go. And then hit OK. And this does look pretty cool, but we're not going to keep it that way. I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to soft light also and bring this opacity down 
around in the 20% range. Actually, that might be too much. I might go below 20. I think I had a below 20. Oh, it's 16 is good. Added a little bit of color to her clothing. Uh, the skin tone color really kind of did help out her skin a little bit. Make it look nice. And just added this overall kind of cool tone-ish to the image, if you will. And some more contrast as well. And speaking of contrast, we are going to uh, add some more. Yay! I usually do it, uh, well, you can use your brightness contrast adjustment layer if you want to, but I usually do it with curves. And I just want a little bit for right now. So you can make a small S-curve with this, but it does, it. if you have a steady hand, you can, you can make it, you know, pretty accurate. But I usually just use Photoshop's preset for linear contrast, and it just makes it for you and adds a little bit of contrast to your image. So I usually just go for that if I ever... You know, whenever I do add contrast to my images, which I do all the time. So after our contrast curve, I'm going to make another curve adjustment layer. I don't know if there's a name for this. I just call it a matte curve. It does have a pretty cool effect on your image. So I'm going to show you how to make it and what I did to it. So I'm going to drag this highlight point up here, right down here to this line below. And I'm going to drag my shadow point or my black point to the line above and I'm going to make a really strong S. So I'm going to drag that point there and I'm going to drag this point here. And that does look really cool but again we're not going to uh, keep it that way. There's this thing that Photoshop, ha Photoshop has. Uh, it's called uh, layer style and if you double click on your layer this box will pop up. And this is where you can kind of more so fine tune how stuff is blended within your images. So right here under blend if, you, uh, I'm gonna work with my underlying layer. This point here for your shadows and this over here for your highlights. So you can choose to, you know, take stuff out of your shadows if you want to by dragging this that way or your highlights. But for this one, I'm going to take it out of my highlights and just leave it in the shadows. But I'm going to split this point in two. And you can do that. So you can kind of play around with it and kind of see what works. But we're going to um, do this little number that I did. So if you hold down Option and you click on this point, it splits into two. And I took this point all the way over to the left and I hit OK and I did lower the opacity of this layer to around 20 or so percent and that really really faded out the shadows and gave it this really cool matte effect that I also love and do tend to do on most of my images just sometimes you know not a whole whole lot but for this, I think that it's it it's not really extreme to me because I think it works for the picture. So whatever works for your image, do it. If it looks good, you know, keep it. So I really like that right there. So I'm going to keep it that way. After this, I'm going to create a color balance adjustment layer. And I'm going to hit up my highlights. And no matter which one you go to, it does tend to affect your entire image, but I'm going to show you a way around that as well. So for this one, I really pumped in some yellow into my highlights, about negative nine. And then I added some green. And then we're going to add some red. Kind of give us this nice warm brown effect. So I'm going to close this and it did affect my entire image. But I only want to affect the brighter areas of my image. So I'm going to double click and open this up again. And I'm going to remove this from my shadows. So I'm going to do the, pretty much the same thing that we did before. I'm going to hold down Option. I'm going to click here to split my shadow point. And I'm going to drag this all the way to the right. And boom. 
there you have it. It's only in the bright areas of your image. So after the uh, color balance layer, I created a solid color layer. And I played around with this and I ended up going with uh, this brownish color. And the number for that is 5A. 3F2A. Hit OK. Change the blend mode to soft light. Probably my favorite blend mode. And kill this opacity. About 16% works. And that is what that did. Kind of did put this these brown tones more in the image, a lot in her skin tone, so really did warm up the image and added a little bit more contrast, which I am totally okay with. And to wrap it all up, I made an exposure adjustment layer, and I went into my offset slider to add a little bit more fade to my image, and I had it set at 0.0021. Just a little bit. And I'll do a before and after of that also. And this was how I color graded this image. I'm going to make a group. I have this highlighted. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hold shift and click there. And command or control G to group them. And I'm going to name it color grade. And I will turn this on and off. That's before, that's after. And I will zoom in a little bit. And that is before, and that's after. Actually, I'll group all of these together just to show you. So everything that we did, this is before, And that is after. And this is how I achieved this look. I spent forever playing around with different things, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I got it, and I was pretty happy with it. You can even save this color grade in your libraries. Just drag it. And you can name it whatever you want. I don't know where. There it is. You can name it whatever you want, and you can use it on the entire set, which is pretty much what I'm doing right now. So yeah, there there you have it. This is what I did. Uh, before I leave you all, there is a link in the description below to a Facebook group. It is called Oza Workshops. It's full of photographers. It's full of retouchers. So if you're looking to learn more about retouching or start or build a retouching portfolio, this group is pretty cool. So you should definitely check it out and request to join. I think that you all could benefit from it. And that is going to do it for me. I appreciate you all watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel for future videos. And be sure to follow me on Instagram. The link to that account is in the description below. And I will see you guys next time.